<clears throat> Anyways, first map is gonna be Awoken. Corrupted Keep, Runes of Sarnath. I feel like we're gonna primarily see standard picks of like uh, medium champions on all these maps. Yeah, Ranger. Pretty vanilla pick for this map. I'm not sure what Vesk... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if his name is Vesk or Veske. I always hear people say Veske, but it sounds like... Wrong way to pronounce the name. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, but he goes Death Knight. So, two pretty strong picks for that map. I think Ranger's a little better <clears throat> overall. <clears throat> I feel like there's better picks than Death Knight for that map, but um, it's not like Death Knight's bad. You can make him work really good, so. Boots actually banning Clutch, which is interesting. Alright, so Vesk actually ends up going a heavy champion. Makes me wonder if Boots is going to go a heavy champion in response, like Sorlag or Keel, but most people aren't really comfortable playing a heavy champion on this map, so he does go BJ, which is still a strong pick, and might still be good against Scale Bear, honestly. We'll see. <clears throat> Sorlag banned by Vesk on the ruins. And yeah, Boots ends up going Galena. She's pretty strong on that map. I mean, she's strong. She can be strong on every map, kinda. Just depends on how you, uh, how you make her work. Vesco Slash. Which is also super strong. If you play Slash correctly in a map like that, she can be really effective, so. Now the picks are kind of kind of even most part. <clears throat> I sound weird. Yeah. To brush my teeth, don't start without me. <laughs> yeah. I'll try. I will try. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> 
Prepare to fight. <clears throat> Round begins in three, two, one. Anyways, I guess we're starting fight. on Vesk. <clears throat> well, interesting move by Boots to steal away. Oh man, but he's staying too long. He should die. I'm surprised Vesk didn't pop ability. I think if he did that right when Boots got in the Mega, he would have killed Boots really fast with the fire and lightning gun. Mm. He really should have used ability there. Again, ability would have probably killed Boots by pushing him around, making the rail easier. Lead lost. Lead tied. Or he could have just used the fire to zone him out so he wouldn't die, but he did get a mutual frag. And yeah, like kind of Kinda of careless of Vesk, but <clears throat> but he does have more stack, and look, he should probably get this heavy. But now stacks are kind of even, so Ooh, it's hard to say. Boots is sort of weak. Oh, we should have grabbed the health. Yeah, if you grab the health, he might have actually. <clears throat> Might have actually gotten a kill or survived. That's nice to see that Vesk actually used the, the fire at the right moment there. Yeah, it's not too big of a deal that he dies, honestly. He did okay damage. Still a little bit of time for heavy. Uh, yeah, the rockets were not that, not that good until the very end. Oh, looks like he didn't hear the portal. <clears throat> but Vesk does end up getting the Mega, so that's good for him. Stopwatch. Oh, I'm glad to see that he rocket jumped. Just to avoid any extra damage. And plus, he needed the railgun, so. He should get this kill. Sadly, he doesn't get it as cleanly as he, uh, as he could have. <clears throat> but, some really good rockets. Oh, if only he used shotgun. I wish he would have, uh, recognized how much damage he actually did. Because machine gun or shotgun would have been really good to finish off Vesk. Missing a lot. I mean, Boots hit a couple of rails at the beginning, which was nice. I think he had two. He had two rails. And Vesk was missing, but then Boots started missing, and Vesk landed two rails and then a third one <clears throat> as Boots was floating in the air. So. Oh. 
would have been nice if maybe after those two rails, if Boots would have pulled that machine gun again. That was a good finish by Vesk. He gets that kill pretty cleanly considering he gets maximum overstack with the Mega, so... <clears throat> I hope Vesk will position for the heavy. He's got a little bit more health. Uh, looks like Boots has superior positioning for this. Yeah. <clears throat> oh no, that shotgun doing no damage for Vesk. Uh, probably should have been his kill. Lost. <clears throat> but that all that all sort of happened because Vesk was in position for heavy and then got to mega late because of the orb. But he's in the lead with one frag. He's got armor. He's landing good rails. Kept looking upward, he probably would have found a, an angle onto boots. <clears throat> nice use of rockets and flame strike, that was good. At the beginning, it just. Yeah, it seemed like Vesk wasn't really using uh, the flame strike at all. But now he's using it at, uh, at pretty good times. So. so that's good. And a good rail. Still some time for heavy. He honestly could have ke kept peeking the heavy. He might have killed boots with one more rail. They know where each other are. Yeah, they're both just fishing for the poke. Oh, kind of a dangerous spot for Vesk to be in. But really good rockets and flame strike at the same time. <clears throat> it really saved them. And a good rail. But yeah, that was a scary situation for Vesk. Beneath the railgun there. I should have heard that rocket jump. Yeah, Boots commits to this. It should be kill for Vesk. Or Vesk commits to it. So yeah, it looks like Vesk should win this map at this rate. <clears throat> He's got a uh, four kill lead, two minutes left. So it's a pretty big lead. He's landing some important rails and another one. Boots, I think, just barely not railable. And now he's a little bit more safe. And Vesk doesn't need to commit <clears throat> to any situation. I can just kind of play it slow. Since time is limited. But he does get the trade with the flame strike, and he gets Mega, which is nice for him. And yeah, this map is GG. One minute warning. First one going to Vesk. <clears throat> I feel like it's kind of a rough start, but 
feel like as the map progressed, Vesk was just playing better and better. So. Yeah, Boots calling GG. I'm gonna go to the second map, which is Corrupted Keep. Vesk is on Scale Bear, and Boots is on BJ. Hey, Nero Nuts. Any pill? We'll start in a minute. Looks like Vesk just needs to use the, uh, the restroom. Anyways, um, looks like we're getting this next map started. to fight. Round begins in three, two, one. Fight. <clears throat> yeah, I'll we'll just start on Vesk's perspective again. Why not? Yeah, he's lacking lightning gun and heavy machine gun, but he actually could have went for it. Ooh, eats a hundred damage rockets from Boots, though. So, a good start for Boots. <clears throat> Man, really careless shove around the corner from Boots. I mean, doing a hundred damage is good and everything, but... <clears throat> At the beginning of the game against a scale bear when he has overstack, he's still gonna have a lot of health even after 100 damage. Surprised Vesk didn't use lightning gun, but somehow his rocket push works. So. so it worked out for him. <coughs> Somehow Boots is kind of reacting a little bit late. Not to push. Wow. 
that really looked like a Shibin Vesk's kill. Well, he gets it anyways. <laughs> Off of the spawn. took a lot of damage and Vesk still hasn't taken any damage pretty much so he's super healthy I would have liked to see Vesk just go for Mega because Boots is probably on that side of the map I just try to get the kill onto him a shame that Boots didn't just fall down for Mega it was right behind him Boots is actually landing so much damage with nail gun. And Tavesk. And he gets another kill to tie it up. I feel like Vesk could have played that a little bit better. He had more health than Boots, and uh, he had a weapon advantage. I think he could have killed Boots when he was stuck at the statue. Good rockets from Vesk, though. <clears throat> oh man, he gets knocked into the fire. Good bull rush by Vesk. Uh, a little bit too much of a commitment from Boots, I think. I mean, he almost killed Vesk, but... But it would have been better to poke a little bit before just committing to a lightning gun fight. <clears throat> just considering the uh, the stack difference. So again, Vesk is in the lead. He did a lot of damage in that moment. <clears throat> it should be another kill for Vesk very soon. He's denying the light armors. Stop watch. And Boots did some decent damage, but the only issue is that it's not that substantial because of the heavy which Vesk picked up, so... is actually having some great defensive rockets. Vesk is now weaker than Boots. I think if Boots recognized that sooner, he could have shoved for the heavy right away. And maybe even killed Vesk before Vex Vesk could even pick it up. But... Five minute warning. No, I don't know about this ability. Well, it actually worked. He landed so many rockets. The only problem now is that he's super low. Yeah, and he can't even go for that armor. <clears throat> Vesk right now is denying the light armors. Oh, this is not gonna work out, yeah. Would've been nice to see Boots just leave and, uh... Use heavy machine gun and just start poking. That is one small advantage that Boots does have, is that he... His hitbox is not as big as Vesk, and he could probably, um... land more poke over time. I mean, he would have to play defensive for like a minute or maybe more, but he has the time to do that in that situation where he was just one kill behind. Uh, that was an interesting moment of both of them using their abilities. <clears throat> Boots actually prioritizing the... Wow. Okay, I feel like that should have been Boots dead, but... 
I kind of prioritized the hourglasses instead of the health. I feel like uh, if he stacked back up, he would have had good positioning on heavy, but... Well, it still worked for him. And he's landing a lot of tri bolts. Ah, oh, and Besk not... Not dropping directly onto the uh, Mega. Costed him his life, but he has much more health than boots. Wow, he actually pushes for the kill. I would have liked to see Vesk push for the kill, <clears throat> considering <clears throat> how low Boots was, but yeah, Vesk was also super low, so... He either should have left right away, or just just committed before the major items spawn. But he still gets Mega, at the least, and... Wow, he's just committing. For a fight. Which wasn't the worst decision. He does get the kill. <clears throat> and Mega is coming up in five seconds, so maybe maybe he can get that too. Oh, but such a good rocket from Boots, shoving Vesk to the side. Oh, Boots actually using the dual wield. The small armor is up right now at the nail gun room. Would have been great to see Boots grab that before coming here. Now he's super low. Hmm. And interesting there, Vest could have. Jesus Christ. I feel like Vest could have pushed through the portal faster and gotten the kill. But he still almost gets the kill and he gets Mega for free. Which Mega. Definitely should have been for boots. I would have loved to see Vesk just bull rush right there and get another kill and pretty much secure the map win for himself. There's no way boots would have been able to escape, I don't think. He just had a shotgun. <clears throat> get the kill anyways and honestly that should secure the map <clears throat> the map win all right well maybe not <clears throat> if boots can stack back up and maybe steal away this mega no no he doesn't he really would need to get this kill right now and then he would have to get the next kill quickly off a of spawn oh why didn't you drop what a rocket. Oh, he can definitely get this next kill. But he needs to... Ah, oh, Jesus, he didn't get the lightning gun. Well, I think that's GG. He doesn't even have the weapon he needs to, to fight. And Vesk is just running away. Unfortunate. I think if he just stayed and waited for Vesk to leave that uh, statue... That he actually might have gotten the kill. Because Vesk just ran over the top very quickly. But, well, good games. Congrats to Vesk. He moves on. Wins 2 0 in this set. Why he banned Clutch instead of Scale? Well, maybe he was just more uncomfortable to play against clutch in comparison to scale. Maybe he had a feeling that uh, that Vesk was going to go scale, or clutch, I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe he just hasn't played against Vesk that much. <clears throat> but maybe you can make some different decisions, Aaron, in this next match. 
Yeah, hello everybody. Hey, Strong Sage. Who picks Clutch on Corrupted Keep? Well, picking Clutch on uh, Corrupted Keep used to be um, used to be very common, actually. Um, when there was round duels, you would see Clutch uh, picked on Corrupted Keep pretty frequently. But in Time Limit Duel, you don't really see Clutch uh, on Corrupted Keep. Hey, Kami, what's up? Kami, Kami. <sighs> Cute little Kami. Anyways, hey, Obes. Hey, Sima. This <laughs> sim's already famous, yeah. Yeah, totally famous. Yeah, no, I mean, I don't think that BJ was uh, necessarily a bad pick either uh, against Scale Bear. I mean, BJ has um, a lot of damage with that ability. But, you know... Uh, I don't think, you know, he would first foresee that Scale Bear was going to be picked on Corrupted Keep, because, like I said, you don't really see uh, Heavy Champions picked on, uh, on Corrupted Keep that often. A lot of people aren't that comfortable with picking a Heavy Champion, so... Anyway, so, okay, we actually are in the quarterfinals, technically. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just opening up the picks and bands here for you guys. <laughs> this looks like it'll be the most interesting match in the quarterfinals, most likely. All right, Aaron picks Molten Falls. This will be the first time we see Molten War Ruins of Sarnath today. I mean, I, I did start my stream kind of late, so I'm, I'm sure I would have seen some other maps in these maps, but... And yeah, those are the two biggest maps that we have <clears throat> in this map pool, so... The last one, if we get there, will be a small map. Looks like either Deep Embrace or Veil. <clears throat> yeah, looks like Vesk picks Veil by banning Deep Embrace. And Aaron just gets rid of Scale Bear right away. Because he knows that Vesk wants to play that. Or likes to. He doesn't want to deal with it. But Vesk actually going Visor. Which, yeah, he's a solid pick. I think on a lot of maps. But he can be at Molten Falls as well. Just because of how, how open it is. It can be rail heavy. 
there's a good amount of hourglasses on the heavy side of the map, so... Yeah, visor can always be good, but you don't really see visor picked that much anymore, even on Molten Falls. People much prefer more mobile champions that uh, have a damage ability or just strong utility with mobility, like Sorlag or Strog. Like I feel like Strog or Sorlag would have been a little bit better of a pick for Vesk, but. It's not like Visor's bad, it's just Sorlag's probably a little better, and for Visor to succeed, he's going to need to pop the ability at the right times, his wall hack, because it's, uh, well, it's kind of rough, because even if he does uh, like use the ability, you're not going to guarantee to even get a rail off. I mean, yeah, you'll get the information knowing where they are, but I feel like on Molten Falls, you should kind of know where your opponent is at all times for the most part, anyways. Um. <clears throat> so that's the, the problem of Visor. His ability is not always that useful. Sometimes it can just be absolutely useless. And then you're running around with no... <clears throat> with no ability, and not that great of a passive. I mean, the passive's nice, you get to run a little faster, but... Sorlag just has everything better than Visor, better movement, better ability for fights. But Arun's a Sarnath, Vest gets rid of Galena, which is... yeah, that's a fine ban. Because she's just... she's strong and she can be hard to deal with, but... Aaron actually goes Ranger, which is a strong pick. And Vesk goes Slash. I feel like that can be kind of an even match. Maybe slightly in the favor of Slash, though, just because she, she is a lot faster overall. But Ranger, <clears throat> Ranger can potentially deal with Slash with the orb. Maybe. We'll see. If he has it. And Aaron bans Death Knight on Veil, but Vesk ends up going Keel. And I'm interested to see that Aaron went Doom. Um, I feel like it would have been better for Aaron to maybe ban Keel, just to get rid of that happy champion, but... I don't know, maybe, maybe Doom will work against Keel, if we get to the last map. But I feel like that matchup is absolutely going to favor... Jesus Christ. I feel like it's absolutely going to favor Vesk in the last map. But I think for this first map, it's a little bit, uh, <clears throat> a little bit better for, uh, for, uh, what's it called? For Aaron with Sorlag, so. Yeah, last set, we were always starting on uh, Vesk's point of view, so let's start on Aaron this time. But it's going to look laggy for just Round a sec. Alright. Fight. 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 Well, he might have heard... He should have probably heard that ability by Vesk, so. See, now Vesk has no wall hack, but Aaron has spit. Uh-oh. That's weird. Aaron, why did you not just commit? Oh, that was so... <clears throat> that was such a bad decision. Wow, but he landed a lot of damage. Yeah, that was just such a bad decision of Aaron. Like, that was the perfect situation that you could have possibly hoped for. With Vesk literally falling right into your lap without realizing it. Because there's no way that Vesk knew that he was there. Vesk only dropped down for the hourglasses. If Aaron just would have went around the corner, or stood there and waited for him, 
He could have used rockets and spits and just deleted Vesk. So, a little bit unfortunate of a start for Aaron, and also... Sadly, he wasted the spits, but... And he sh honestly should have died there, but he does land a rail and kind of recover. <clears throat> but so far, this is a good start for Vesk. He's got Mega, he's gonna get Heavy. He's got way more health than Aaron. It's just a shame, though. It should have been uh, First Blood for Aaron in full control. Or at least heavy control. And hourglass control. Oh yeah, he should have heard ability. But again, Aaron is a little weak, but he's slowly recovering, so that's good. Nice. I'd like to see Aaron just fight for this mega with spit. Should be his kill. Ah, uh, if only he used shotgun or machine gun. If he would have maybe pushed up top for the heavy, could be good. But now Aaron, or rather Vesk, has better positioning, more health. Yeah, you should hear that. Sadly, the rocket not connecting for him. Yeah, again, Vesk has massive stack advantage, so... Overall, it's going a little bit better for Vesk. But... Yeah, it's still kind of a shame for Aaron, because it really should be 2-0 at this point for Aaron. minutes and not a kill which is interesting I mean they definitely from what we've seen they definitely should have been a kill <clears throat> by this time nice rail prevented Vesk from getting to the rockets and Vesk actually losing the mega which this mega probably should have been his just going through that portal and then jumping up that Aaron was a little bit uh, careless, but now Aaron has the stack advantage. But now things are even again. It's just uh, Aaron couldn't really find the damage he needed. He finds a little bit more, but again. Oh, I would have liked to see Aaron go for a rail. Might have been able to land it. But now he kind of messes up his positioning for Mega because of pushing like that. And again, Vesk has pretty good stack advantage. The spit doesn't connect. Vesk took way more damage than he should have, but he does finally get the kill. Man, Aaron is shoving. But this Mega should be Vesk's once more. Oh no. Kind of... I kind of would have liked to see... Oh wow, nice rails. I would have liked to see Vesk just commit for the kill. He had a good stack, and he had the weapons he needed. Aaron only had rockets and rails. I feel like he could have played... A more mid-range game. Kind of shaky LG, but he does get the kill. Finally getting the lead, which you probably should have gotten the lead sooner. So. I think I forgot to update the map score at the bottom. It is 1-0 for Vesk right now. So Aaron, Aaron needs to win. Oh wait, is this the first map? Jesus, I'm losing my mind. No, this is this is the first map, isn't it? I'm so stupid. 
it's not 1 0 for Vesk. This is the first map. Uh, honestly, I'm, I feel so hazy, so forgive me for uh, having no idea what I'm talking about. This is the first map. I'm just. Uh, I'm obviously very stupid, so. so confused right now. I feel like I should just stop talking. Might be the best decision. Could be Vesk's chance to get his third kill, which is going to be a big one. It could be the kill that maybe wins the map. I would have liked to see him rocket jump up towards Aaron, but I don't think he realizes how low Aaron is. Aaron should have probably no idea what the mega timing is, but he does know about the time when Heavy's up. This was so risky of Aaron. Yeah, and he kind of gets a deserved death. And there's one situation where the Visor's piercing sight gets him a free rail. Oh, so risky again of Aaron. Wow, Aaron should have died. Oh, well, Vesk. I feel like Vesk, he, he can afford to play a little bit more aggressive. He's kind of giving Aaron too much space sometimes. Oh, man. Shame that he misses that two rails where he should have landed them. He's kind of giving Aaron a chance. He should have killed Aaron, had two frag lead, and then won this map just by the time running out. But he's, yeah, like I said, he's giving Aaron a chance, especially with these rail angles. Now Aaron has the stack advantage, and Heavy's coming up in 10 seconds, which is a good chunk of time to maybe kill Vesk or pressure him. But he will have to wait for the Heavy to come up. Really good for Aaron. Can he land this rail? Oh my god. Good defensive rockets from Vesk. That's really saving him. That was huge for Vesk, actually. I'm gonna switch to Aaron. He needs to get this kill, but he won't. There's no time. Oh, or will he? Vesk shouldn't be here. Oh no. God, the lightning gun was just really bad from Aaron. He honestly should have killed Vesk. He caught him. You win. When he shouldn't have, I don't think Air, uh, I don't think Vesk should have been there at the lightning gun. But he still did find Vesk. He just this lightning gun is looking really bad this game, which is interesting. He has better accuracy than Vesk, but he did shoot slightly less shots. But yeah, his lightning gun is just really really bad this game. Maybe it'll be better. Sound like I just woke up? Yeah. Thinking about tomorrow's match? No, not really. Not really worried about it. <clears throat> Anyways, that was the first map, which goes to Vesk. Second map is Ruins of Sarnath. Oh, we're at, we're at the picks again.
Yeah. That's right, slash against Ranger. <clears throat> hey, Kubel. What's up? What's up? Prepare to fight. <laughs> Round uh, it's gonna look laggy for a Three, sec. Two, one, All right. Fight. Anyway, so Vesk on slash. <clears throat> Well, Aaron needs to win this map, but he needs, uh... He needs to land some good rails, and make sure that he uses, uses orb aggressively up close, but he just wasted his orb completely. It's gonna put... It's gonna put Vesk at the advantage almost instantly. But he landed some good shots. Would've been nice to maybe see him go forward instead of back and finish him. Nice, he should finish Vesk right here. It's absolutely his kill. But he's missing rails. Unfortunate. It's almost feeling like last map. Nice, good rocket again missing rail. It's kind of feeling like last map where Aaron should have had the first kill or first two kills but didn't and ended up losing the map, honestly. So... Two good rockets from Vesk, it has 95 damage in total. Yeah, unfortunate. Does not seem like it's Aaron's day today. But thankfully... Map's not lost yet. There we go. Okay, well... Would've been nice if he got that kill a little bit more clean, but that's okay. I mean, he still gets the kill, and he actually recovers his health pretty nicely. I would've liked to see him be a little bit more aggressive right now, because he does have weapon advantage. I'm pretty sure Vesk didn't have rail, or lightning gun, or rockets. He had no weapons, so... Yeah, would've been nice. Aaron to recognize that, but again, he will recover his health, and actually he's going to be more healthy than Vesk. Nice, there we go, oh man, oh gee, yes. there we go, well that's good, and that was his first really good orb that he had. He's doing a good job remembering when these light armors are up, which is uh, which is good. Stop watch. The only thing is he's oh nice. LG LG. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. Aaron almost giving up a kill. Yeah, the only thing is, I don't think that Aaron knows when the heavy is up, because every time he goes for the light armor, the heavy is taken. Maybe he does know that. Like someone like maybe Rafa, he'll he'll know that that's happening. Nice rail. He needs a shove for the kill with lightning gun. Mm, why is he pull out rail? I mean, I know he was kind of. Oh, there you go for a kill. I mean, I know Vesk was kind of a little far away, but... Yeah, 
he should know for sure now that heavy stuff at the same time as that light armor, so. Oh, I like the idea of that rail. Oh, the fact that Aaron already has four kills ahead should win him this map. Nice lightning gun. Oh no. Oh no. I don't like that he jumped forward at Vesk. He ended up taking way more damage than he should have. Aaron should be pretty healthy right now. But he landed in decent rockets, so. But he's at this uh, at this heavy way too early. Again, I feel like at this point he should have recognized that heavy's up at the same time as that light armor. Maybe he does know, maybe he just wants to be here early, I'm not sure. But yeah, he won't be able to get this mega. And honestly, he doesn't need to over commit to any fights. He has five kills ahead, five minutes left. It's honestly gonna be hard for Vesk. Yeah, and a bad drop from Vesk. If he was fishing for rails for poke first, that would have been better. But if there's one champion that can make five kills in five minutes, or six kills, it's definitely Slash just because of how fast she is, but at this point I don't think it matters. Aaron uh, has too many kills. It's just no time left, honestly. It's kind of the issue with time limit duel at the moment. There's no opportunity for a comeback in like 95% of games. Like, even in the Quake Pro League on the Sundays, the games are mostly over five minutes in. It's like, it's super rare to, f to have a match that's really, really close, which is a shame, but for the most part, it's just... It's just how time limit duel is at the moment, so... Aaron does take the second map, so it's good. We get to see it go to a third in the quarterfinals here. <laughs> it's a good rail for Aaron to land. Makes Vesk really low. But it is GG anyways, so... Yeah, it was kind of a rough start again, this, this map for Aaron, but thankfully he did recover and get a good chunk of kills. So yeah, just gotta sit here and wait for it to be over. I kinda wish there was some way to... I wish there was some way that Vesk could come back. I wish that... I wish Vesk had some sort of... just possibility for a comeback, but it's just sad that there is no possibility for a comeback. But honestly, thankfully, Vesk does call GG early, because it's not that fun to watch the rest of a map that's already over when it's, you know, it's over five minutes in, and then you have to sit there and just wait for it to, to finish. It's like, not fun. It's not fun for, <laughs> for the person, people watching, I don't think. And it's not fun for the players to just sit there and sit there and, you know, you're just waiting. Waiting for the inevitable, it's very anticlimactic. But yeah, last map is Vale. Vesk is on Keel. Aaron is on Doom. This one will be kind of interesting, because I, uh... I mean, I don't think that Doom is bad on any map. I think he's good on every map, but... I feel like Kiel is just way better. It's funny, even when you watch uh, European Pro League or European tournaments, uh, the players there, even they don't pick heavy champions as much as they should, and they don't even pick Kiel on this map when they really should. I mean, Kiel is one of the best champions on this map. Kiel, Scale Bear, Sorlag. They're pretty much the best. And then, yeah, maybe, you know, Aizen. 
Ranger Galena, things like that. But. Unless they're practicing something that isn't winning. Yeah, I guess. Prepare to fight. Well, once the game is over, you're pretty much just practicing Round at that point. Three, two, That's a shame. I don't want to see people practice. I want to see people, you know, have a chance to win. Well, I think that was the beauty of, of round duels. Round duels, there was way more close games way more often. Almost always it was close games. And it's because there's a reset, because there's opportunity to come back, there's chances, there's adaptation, there's more adaptation, more strat strategy. With Time Limit Duel, it's more... The whole meta of Time Limit Duel is just plus forward, get the first couple of kills, and then just win after that by playing more defensive, so... Good of Aaron to get the heavy. A shame that Vesk didn't just jump onto the Mega right away. Oh no. This is not good for Vesk. I mean, he might get this kill, actually. He does, but... It really should have been... Actually, I'm going to switch back to Aaron. It really should have been Aaron's kill a little bit more cleanly. But it's hard to deal with... Heal. I mean, uh, when you have shotgun, grenades, even in a bad spot like that. Oh, what a great rocket. He can still, you know, get the kill. Wow. Even though Aaron double jumped into lightning gun. He's done that a couple of times today where he's just jumping into someone's lightning gun. Wow. The vest gets the refrag. Yeah, Aaron still got that kill, which is a little bit surprising. Uh, kind of shaky lightning gun from Vesk. Ends up costing him. Uh, Aaron should not be here. Yeah, it's just bad positioning. It would be better if Aaron just gave up the mega because it was never gonna. He was never gonna get this mega. Um, it would have been better to see Aaron just go for the rail gun because he did need rail. He need raw rockets, so. If instead he dropped down here for rockets, backed up for the rail, he would have more weapons than Vesk. Because Vesk only had lightning gun. But in that position, that's all he needed, and a really good rocket from Vesk. He ties it up, which is good. But he is here early. Wow. Some nice rockets and grenades from Vesk. Yeah, you, you can kind of see that overall... Just nah, oh man. That was really, really careless of Aaron. I don't know why he did that. But you can already see in the first few minutes how much more useful Keel is as a champion on this map. Just the damage that you can get with the uh, grenades. That's much better than, than Doom having a double jump. But like I said, Doom is still good. It's just... For this map in particular, Keel just fits much better. And plus, Keel just fits better in the meta. Again, the meta of, of Quake right now, the meta of Duel, is to be aggressive and just push and just push and to not really think that much. Just uh, try to get the kill and even if you die, just chase off a spawn. Oh man, Aaron's gonna die. Wow, Aaron should have died. He actually gets the kill with like 18 HP. Nice, rockets and grenades. Again, kind of risky of Aaron to be dropping down constantly like that. But yeah, so, like I said, Keel just fits the meta. Really good. And Aaron constantly dropping down. He did this like... Almost on every map, like dropping in his opponent, 
jumping at his opponents when they have lightning gun, things like that. He's gotta be more careful. Oh no! Yeah, it looks like he got confused by the sound. I think if Aaron played more, he he really should have known that the Vesk would spawn the heavy, not the rail. Five minute warning. Uh, this is a very back and forth match so far. But this is how this map is. This map, it's gonna, it should, it's almost always gonna be a really aggressive, really back and forth, just like a lot of fights constantly. Again, that's the meta, and it's also a small map, and that's kind of just how the map is played. You need to play this map extremely actively. You have to look for damage constantly, because there's so many spots that are traps on this map. Like, this map is just a bundle of, uh, of traps. Like, there must be at least ten spots in this map where once one position is extremely powerful, another position is extremely weak. Oh man, he takes two rails. Again, he just pushes down into that into that room pretty carelessly and fast. But he might get some damage. Oh man, he gets railed again and again. I think Vesk landing something like four rails in a row. So. Good rails from Vesk, and he's got as big of a stack as he possibly can have, so Vesk is just extremely healthy. He absolutely needs to fight Aaron. Oh, such a good rocket. It wasn't a ton of damage on that rocket, but it is kind of a ton of damage when you compare the stacks. Because Aaron had, what, 200 health. But Vesk had, uh, what, like, uh, like four, uh, like 375 health more than him. Yeah, something like that. So, doing 66 damage when you're already 170 more health than your opponent is actually gigantic. So that rocket was really, really big from Vesk. And it's looking pretty dangerous for Aaron because... He's behind, he needs to catch up, and he has no health in comparison. Comparison to Vesk. Oh no, well this... It's a big mistake from Vesk, using Rail up close. If Vesk used a different weapon, he would have killed Aaron for free. Oh, but he can't stand here. Dude, switch to machine gun. Fuck's sake. Yeah, that's the only thing. He, uh... Vest kind of recovered well with the grenades, but... It was just risky using the rail up close like that. And now he might die. Or, Aaron might die. Wow. Vesk is really giving Aaron chances. And sadly, Aaron not finishing the kill twice now. There we go. LG. LG. Just... God, the one time you don't push, Aaron. <laughs> like, so many times they'll just push into a room, fall down his opponent at the worst times. But this is the time to just push. Like, even if you get railed, it doesn't matter. You need the kill and... Ugh. <sighs> Well, at least Aaron has full control. Oh, man. Please don't just drop down right now, carelessly. Yeah, he is. It's working. This time it worked. Nice. There you go. Oh, don't go for this. You need heavy. Don't lose positioning on this. Well, thank thankfully, Vesk is set Mega too early. He didn't go for heavy. He could have actually maybe stolen heavy or stopped Aaron from getting it. This should be Aaron's kill. God damn it, Aaron, again he double jumps into Vesk. If he didn't double jump into Vesk, he would have killed Vesk. He had 5 HP, he was just one tick of lightning gun away from death. Jesus, man. <laughs> like... Uh, 
Aaron, you know what's funny? Aaron is his worst, his own worst enemy. He really is. Now Aaron's gonna maybe lose this map because of fucking up completely. <laughs> oh, some good rockets from Aaron. All right. Ties it up. He's got to be careful. Oh, he's gonna die. Oh my. Oh my God. Seven HP. God, Aaron should have honestly been dead. No. No. Not like this. For either of them, this is going to be heartbreaking to lose. <gasps> oh, Jesus Christ. What the hell? What, what is this game right now? What is going on? It, like, couldn't be any more sloppy. Mostly from Aaron. He gets Mega. Oh, come on. Hurry up, but hey. Well, this was a time where double jumping into him was good because of Heavy being up. Jesus Christ. Well, Aaron taking the third map. Aaron... <laughs> God. This will sound horrible, but uh, it doesn't matter. Aaron should have lost that fucking map just because of all those mistakes. <laughs> Aaron honestly probably deserved to lose that map because, jeez, man, like, there were just so many mistakes from him. It was ridiculous. But he barely wins, so hey, congrats to him. He moves on to the semifinals. But Jesus Christ. He should have lost. <laughs> he should have... He should have absolutely just <laughs> lost. Uh, <clears throat> I feel like all Vesk needed was just a little bit more accuracy in some moments. Jesus Christ. Hey, BBQ. Rough. Hey, Trump. Yeah, I'm okay. Thanks for asking. Uh, I'm not sure how tomorrow's gonna go against Rafa, but we'll see. Not really worried about it, but... I mean, I don't really feel... I don't really feel anything about, about it, to be honest with you. I don't feel anything either way. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna check out the brackets. All right, we'll just keep watching this. So we should be watching Georgie against Aaron. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ, that last map was just. So dumb. <laughs> like, uh, just so sloppy, man. So sloppy. But yeah, nice try to Vesk. Hopefully, he'll get top two at some point. Just do your best. Yeah, I, uh, I always do my best. How do the qualifiers work? Do you have to be a certain ELO or anyone can try? Yeah, anyone can, can try. So the way that it works is that there's going to be eight of these challenger tournaments. So this is number six, and we only have two more left. So there's eight of these challenger tournaments. Whoever gets top two in each eight tournaments will qualify for the challenger playoff uh, tournament. So 16 players will end up uh, uh, 16 players will end up playing in a challenger tournament with a double elimination bracket and whoever gets top two in that final playoff tournament those guys will challenge the bottom two ranked players in the Quake Pro League. And if they beat those pro players, um, those pro league players, then they enter the pro league and they get to yeah play in the pro league.
So yeah, that's how it works. <clears throat> and so far, it looks like I'll probably beat bottom two in North America for Pro League. If I had to guess, I'm probably going to be bottom two in the Pro League. Like, I was very optimistic when I got back into the Pro League. Like, I was 100% confident that I was going to be top five, but uh, I didn't factor in how horrible my internet is, so... And not to mention that three out of the nine players are not from North America. They're not in North America, so... I have, like, absolutely horrible internets where this game is unplayable for me now. And then I have to, like you know, also play with, like, high ping connection and deal with that, which is, that's already, yeah, it's just, there's no way I can win against, like, half of the players easily. And even that map that I took from to hang, I don't know, I mean, uh, I still kind of just see that as luck in a way. All right, Boots. Good luck next week, man. Have a good uh, good night. Thanks for hanging out for a moment. Thanks for the luck. All right, so uh, it's too loud. All right, so we're gonna get the picks and bands. Just give me a moment. So, first map, Exile, from Georgie. Aaron goes Vale. Well, I guess as long as he doesn't pick Doom and uh, play like he did before, that'll go wonderfully for him. <laughs> Honestly, I feel like Georgie should beat Aaron. <laughs> the only way that Georgie can really lose to Aaron at this point is if he plays somehow worse than Aaron. Which, hey, maybe that's possible, but... <laughs> God, that last map was just so... so dumb. <laughs> Alright, last map is Molten Falls. After watching that performance from Aaron, uh, we're, we're all gonna cheer for Georgie. That, that performance by Aaron just made me physically ill. I'm turning green watching Aaron play. <laughs> I look like fucking Shrek right now. Georgie banning Galena or Galena or Galena if you're to hang. <laughs> uh, or oh, uh, how else do people say her name? <laughs> there's there's a lot of poor pronunciations of Galena's name. I feel like the only two ways to say her name is Galena or Galena. Anyways, Aaron actually goes Keel on exile. Curious what Georgie is going to end up going. Go Strog, yeah, it's a fine pick. <clears throat> I mean, Strog is pretty much strong on, uh, <clears throat> on every map, so. And it kind of can be said for Keel as well. I'll be surprised if we don't see Scale Bear or Sorlek picked on this map. By one of them. But we'll see. I, I mean, I'm not even sure if Aaron... I mean, Aaron, he can play Sorlag. I just don't know if he plays Scale Bear much. But maybe he won't even decide to go that. Maybe he'll go something else. Maybe he'll go Doom again. And double jump into Lightning Gun. And barely win. 
I know I'm giving Aaron a lot of shit, but he deserves it, so... <laughs> he, he's a little brat, so I mean, you know... The least I can do. Jesus Christ. I think Aaron is just giving me the middle finger by picking Doom. I swear to God. Aaron is just trying to spite me. And so he's picking Doom Unveil. God. You know what? I, I wanna see Doom Unveil. I wanna see I wanna see him <laughs> I wanna see him just fucking lose this time. <laughs> just wanna see him absolutely fuck it all up <laughs> one more time. Let's just see it one more time, Aaron. I'm surprised that Aaron didn't go Sorlag on Molten Falls. He actually ends up going Visor. I'm not sure if Georgie plays Sorlag much, but he actually ends up going Slash. And Slash can also be really good on Molten Falls, so... I mean, I think overall they both have pretty good picks on all the maps. Um, again, Doom is good. It's just that Aaron is not. <laughs> no, but anyways, Doom is good. It's just, it depends on how Aaron is going to really make it work. The last set, he, he really didn't make it work at all. Uh, so, we'll see if he can manage it this time around. But, um, yeah. <laughs> You're done, homie? Boots, don't be done. You just got to practice a little more, man. And I want to see you play more, man. You can do it. You can do it. Anyways, I gotta fix this. What is the interface here? Is it custom or site I'm gonna use? Ah, yeah, it's uh, it's this website. So I'll link you. Yeah, anyone can use this if you want to duel somebody and you want to kind of yeah have a pick and ban <clears throat> phase where you can kind of see see the picks and the bans and and all that. Because, yeah, there's nothing that exists like that in the game at the moment, which is a shame. Oh, people usually just use that website. Oh, yeah, I gotta change the, uh... Change this. Not sure if it's centered, but it's probably good enough. It's gonna look laggy for a moment, sorry. Lag, 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 I know. Hold on a sec. Prepare to fight. The strongest wins. Yeah. Or the or the lucky one. Yeah, let's see what Aaron does here. Who knows, maybe that last win against Vesk will give him a boost in confidence and he'll just play really good. I just hope that no one gets unlucky and falls off the, the map. <sighs> wow, somehow that rail not connecting. He probably just missed by a pixel or something. Wow, so aggressive from Georgie. Wow, again, Aaron not landing the rail. I feel like Georgie could have maybe pressured more, but securing the heavy is <clears throat> also not a bad option. So. I come here and get it. Well, he does a lot of damage to Aaron, and he gets stuck on nothing. Exile things. Well, unfortunate for Aaron. But a good first kill for Georgie. And somehow that rail also not connecting at all. Just looks like pixel misses. And they 
Again, Aaron is weak. But he does rocket jump up for the mega, which is good. He at least steals it away from Georgie and recovers some stack. And stacks are actually kind of even, so... It's not that bad. Georgie has, like... Well... No, Aaron is the one that has a stack advantage, but yeah, so... Aaron should get this heavy. But Georgie's looking for damage. One of those rails would have killed either of them. Oh my god. Oh my god, they're both missing. We should have seen another kill by now. Ugh. <laughs> Even Strog was just ugh at that. Gets the heavy, and he should be able to pressure for this mega. That's some good damage from Georgie. Yeah, that's really good damage. Looks like Aaron nearly falling off the map, too. Nice. He does catch Georgie out. Finally gets his first kill, tying up the score, so good job. And he's. Deals away the heavy, but can he switch his weapons? Well, he doesn't need to switch. He's fine. Nice rockets. He should just drop and finish off Georgie. Nice. Good rail angle. So much damage. Yeah. A clean kill for Aaron. He has a huge stack. Georgie should not be here. Really poor weapon usage. That should have been a clean kill for Aaron again. Instead of using lightning gun or rail, he should have just been using rockets that whole time and grenades. I mean, maybe he didn't have any more grenades, but, you know, just rockets right in Georgie's face and he would have killed Georgie. But at least he gets the heavy, and he will get the mega once again, so... Five minute warning. And this heavy should be Aaron's one more time. But Georgie is going to try to pressure forward. Now Georgie has positioning on this heavy. That was really a bad decision by Aaron to push the portal. He ended up giving Georgie a free heavy armor when he really didn't need to do that. Oh no. Wow, somehow he doesn't push Aaron off the map. Some luck for Aaron. And again, I mean, Aaron should have been dead right there. He had like 10 HP. But he should die right here. Yeah. He at least lands one grenade, so stacks are kind of even. And he steals heavy. Oh, that's good for Aaron. Ugh. Gary. Yeah, that was a bit predict predictable to be standing on that mega. anyone's kill, but they're both kind of missing a lot. Georgie ending up barely getting that kill. Aaron just need to land one more half-decent rocket to kill Georgie before that heavy. So, kind of unfortunate for Aaron. Oh wow, 
so risky of Aaron, but it's kind of working. Again, just not enough damage. He, he did land that last rockets onto Georgie, but only did 15 damage. Oh, if Georgie would have uh, hit Aaron with a little more lightning gun, he would have actually pushed Aaron off the map, but I actually get a mutual frag thanks to that grenade. Oh no, he could have done so much damage to Georgie for free. No, this is not good. No, this is not good. <laughs> oh, he almost dies to Georgie. He's gotta be really careful. Still needs one more kill to tie it up. <clears throat> He's here for Mega a little bit early, but it's okay. Oh, Georgie's, Georgie's looking for these sneaky rail angles. He's at heavy too late. If he ran to heavy right away, maybe he had a chance, but he has no rockets, so... He really shouldn't fight Georgie until he gets some rockets for himself. If he is going to fight Georgie, he needs to make sure that he's in positions where... he can utilize the, the weapons that he has. Wow, what a peeker. How did that peeker even... That was kind of insane. I don't even understand how that peeker shot him up in the air. He must have... Because when you bump up against the walls in this map, it's kind of... Uh, kind of messed up because it'll shove you up in the air. So... I, th I think that peeker must have like pushed him up against the little ramp. Oh, that was really weird. Nice rail. Aaron never expecting that. Yeah, Aaron, honestly, he could have even went for the heavy and killed Georgie. Georgie was pretty weak. Oh no. Oh wow, Aaron somehow recovering. <laughs> That was so lucky for Aaron to actually survive getting pushed off the map. That's a very low chance of happening, I think. But even though he got lucky, he still died, and this might be... I mean, it's not might be, this is GG. So, good job to Georgie, he takes the first map. to Georgie. Hopefully Aaron can recover on the second map. <sighs> Thought he was trolling him sending a grinder link. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why the website's called grinder, but eh, well, that is what it is. Alright, so yeah, next map is Veil. Yeah, I feel like Death Knight is a little bit better than Doom on this map overall, but... We'll see, maybe Aaron will play, uh... We'll play this a little bit better than he did before. I hope. 
I mean, I hope Aaron wins this map. Um, just not sure. Oops. Just not sure what's going to happen. Oh, shit. Son of a bitch. Of course, I dropped my expensive headphones. That's awesome. Prepare to fight. That's great. Round begins. Well, sums up the past couple of years. Two. One. All right. I guess we'll start on Aaron. Actually, I want to start on Georgie. I just want to see if Georgie can land uh, a good flame strike onto Aaron and just start off uh, start off playing Death Knight properly. Uh, you know, he would have actually killed Aaron if he double clicked the Death Knight's ability. He absolutely would have killed Aaron. So, he did land the ability, but not as good as he could have, so... Not the best ability usage from Georgie, but at least Aaron's super low and you can kind of... You should be able to pressure Georgie and kill him. Nice, good rail from Georgie. Or you should be able to pressure Aaron, I think is what I meant to say. Yeah, we're gonna trade major items. Oh. Oh, Aaron's gonna die again. Oh, Aaron actually spawning lightning gun. Played by Georgie so far. He's just landing everything he needs to land. He's landing a lot of rails. Again, Aaron just shoving forward with lightning gun. I mean, it wasn't too bad. He, he did get Georgie pretty low, but he really risked eating another rail. Because Georgie could have just railed one more time and backed off like that. He missed the Death Knight burst damage, but it does land the damage over time, which actually ends up killing Aaron, so it was actually a good ability overall. If he would have landed the burst uh, as Death Knight, he would have popped Aaron immediately. Like, Aaron was just going to be dead with uh, Flame Strike and Shotgun. So it was kind of unlucky for Georgie, but he recovered. Georgie <laughs> ending up trapping Aaron a bit. I don't think Aaron expected that. And Aaron almost killing Georgie right there. He almost found a rail angle right before the Mega. <sighs> yeah, Georgie's honestly just playing this map a little better. Nice flame strike again, it lands. Oh no. Unfortunate to see Aaron just shove after that. Might be better to just leave. Or instead prioritize health over a kill. Because once you commit like that, Death Knight will just be at the advantage. I mean, it's the, it's the exact same thing as if you were to do that against Sorlag. If you're burning against Sorlag and then you push her, as you're burning from the acid, I mean, you're probably going to lose that fight. So, a little bit careless from Aaron. It's not looking good. Six kills in six minutes. When you're, I don't know, when your opponent's just playing better than you. It's, it's really hard to say if we're going to see such a huge comeback, considering you usually don't see them. Aaron's gonna die, I think, no matter what you're... Uh, honestly, I think that's GG. 
Georgie is just playing better, and he's using his ability pretty good more often than not. And even if he dies here, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, there's this. Ooh, the flame strike again. That was the only. I think that might be the only frame, <laughs> flame strike that didn't do any damage. Five minutes so. warning. Like nine out of the ten flame strikes Georgie has done have been pretty good, but he will die here. Yeah, Aaron's gonna. S I mean, the only way Aaron can really come back here. <laughs> I'm not sure how he's gonna be able to do it, but he's gonna need to get like five kills really cleanly and then somehow get one more kill after that at the last minute or so. But it's so hard to get a clean kill against Death Knight because of Flame Strike. I wish that Georgie didn't even use the Flame Strike right there. But at least he is getting Aaron really low. Oh my god, Aaron is super low. So far, so good for Aaron. But still, he needs four kills in three and a half minutes. It's still really hard to say what's gonna happen. I wish Georgie saved that ability for when Aaron was closer, but he actually gets heavy and does a lot of damage. Yeah, this is not good for Aaron. And yeah, like I said, it's really hard to get clean kills on Death Knight because of his ability. Oh man, what a pop-up. Yeah. Yeah, like I said a couple minutes ago, I'm pretty sure this is GG. Because again, <laughs> Aaron needs to get like 5-6 kills clean. And it's just so hard to do when Death Knight can do a ton of damage. With ability. But I mean if Georgie misses his ability, like that's a thing. It's not that Aaron has to do something uh, correctly to beat Georgie right here. It's more like Georgie needs to play really bad to really uh, to lose this map. Like he'll just need to miss all the flame strikes and also miss position badly. And, I mean, so far, yeah, Georgie isn't playing defensively as good as he could be. So, I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's a thing. It's just Georgie throwing this game away. Yeah, yeah Georgie's just playing super careless. This should have been a very easy map win for him, but he's just kind of going out like this, like just going to places that he shouldn't be going to. I mean, he does get this kill. He lands like a perfect flame strike and good shotgun damage. And Aaron sadly does not go to the heavy. What a game. It was like such a throw from Georgie, but then Georgie kind of recovered and Aaron started throwing. <laughs> it's just a throw fest. And I mean, yeah, Aaron did recover, but like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't so much that Aaron did the right thing, it was just that Georgie was doing a lot of wrong things to allow Aaron to come back.
Yeah, he's just waiting for the rocket jump. Yeah, it is GG. That flame strike did so much damage to Aaron, even though Georgie mispositioned completely. Well, nice try to Aaron. Georgie ends up winning 2 0, which I think makes him top two, right? I mean, I think that was the semi. Yeah? Well, congratulations to Georgie. And also, Cyrix gets top two as well, so. Well, I guess we're already in the grand finals. Got to change it to the semi-finals, but whatever. <clears throat> but yeah, well done. Well done to Georgie. So does only one person from the qualifiers make it to Quake Pro League or how does this work? Um, so the, whoever gets top two in the finals, uh, they play the bottom two Pro League players. And then you have to beat one of the bottom two Pro League players in the best of five. And if you beat them in the best of five, then you are in the Pro League and you do enter the, the official final tournament of that of the Pro League division as well, so... It's kind of a mouthful to explain the whole thing. Um, it's kind of like weird to explain it, because it takes a few minutes to kind of break it all down, but... But yeah, <clears throat> that's... Uh, <laughs> that's the way it is. So yeah, finals is going to be Cyrix against Georgie. So top two don't play each other, I see. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, like I said, it's kind of... It's kind of weird to... Uh, to explain the whole thing sometimes. But. Yeah, we'll watch the uh, picks and bans in a moment. And I was thinking maybe to continue streaming after this tournament, but honestly, I don't know if I will. I might just go do some other things. I really don't feel like... I don't really feel like playing Quake. At least for a couple of weeks. Or something like that. <clears throat> Anyways, I probably have the picks and bands ready soon. Oh, I wish I could be watching Razy stream or something. It's always nice to watch Razy play.
Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the stream. I don't think it's as good of quality as how I usually make it, and maybe you guys don't notice. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing the picks and bands yet, or at all. Okay, no, we should be. Yeah, this will be a pretty good match. I mean, it looks like Georgie is playing well today. And Cyrux, um, which I believe, yeah, is a South American player. He also plays pretty good. Um, so, it should be a good match. It might have even been nice to watch Cyrux play earlier, but um, I don't know. We were we had some good matches on the top side of the bracket. So. And yeah, I don't have the bra the bra <laughs> my bracket command is not uh, is not updated. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna wait for them to get the link going. Others like today. That's kind of nice out. Anyways, all right, well, we got the picks and bands link. <coughs> all right, Deep Embrace, Exile. Two pretty small maps so far. Maybe Ruins of Sarnath will get to the end, but we'll see. Yeah, it actually does. I, mean, I can't really remember what Cyrux plays. I think he can play heavy champions. Uh, so maybe we'll see some heavy champs picked on these maps. Same. Honestly, I'm kind of hoping for a two zero from either of them. I kind of just want to go and do some things. <laughs> I don't feel like sitting here right now. <coughs> Interesting Strog. I feel like we're absolutely going to see Keel picked or Skill Bear by Cyrix. And we'll see, but I've got a good feeling he's going to pick a heavy champion here. At least I hope he does. I think it'd be a 
Probably a good choice for him. Okay, it doesn't. He actually goes Galena. Well, shows you what I know. Definitely, out of out of all the champions that are available, I think Galena would be the the last the last champion that I would really expect. I feel like there's a lot of better choices, like Ranger, even Aizen, Scale Bear, Sorlag. Even Death Knight. But I mean, it's not like Galena's bad. Uh, and she's like, she's a pick that people are just very, very comfortable with, so. I guess I'm not surprised. But Georgie does get rid of Keel on this map. And now I'm not sure what Cyrix is gonna go. I mean, I still think that Scale Bear can be really strong in this map, or Sorlag also can be really strong in this map. But he does go. Ranger, I guess he's just sticking with more standard <coughs> picks. Yeah, um, congratulations though to both of these players because they've already qualified for the playoff tournament. Uh, and whoever wins this match right here, uh, what they get is just um, better seeding going into the next tournament. So whoever wins this will be number six seed. And I think I think the loser of this match is gonna be number like twelve seed or fourteen seed, something like that. I mean some people will say that uh the loser is like number seven seed and this winner is number six, but I'm pretty sure that is absolutely not how it works. The winner is always gonna be the seed of that week. Like, this is the number six challenger tournament, so the winner of this will be number six seed. And seeding can be pretty important for the challenger finals because it makes it so you get pick and ban priority for the maps and champs, which it could absolutely can be something you can work into your advantage if you... if you pick things right and if you know what to, to pick and ban against your opponent. Like, when I was in the challengers for like a year trying to come back to the pro league I was always trying to take advantage of that as much as I could and it honestly helped me a lot to win a lot of matches but yeah last map's runes of Sarnath Georgie went Slash and Cyrux actually went Visor I think that absolutely is going to favor Georgie but yeah Yeah, looks like they're going to start very soon, guys. I really hope that Toxic will uh, will get top two in the finals in a couple of months. I'm really hoping that we'll see like Toxic and Kron be top two. That'd be amazing. I mean, 
mean, because it looks like it'll be CNZ and Garpy at the bottom again, most likely. And, I mean, I think, you know, Garpy and CNZ, they're both good players, and I enjoy watching them play. Um, you know, but they kind of had their chance for a while now, and it's been a long time, a long time since we've watched uh, Kron or Toxic be in the Pro League, so it would just be nice to see them again. But it would just be nice if, you know, Europe maybe just had more slots. And I say this pretty much every Saturday, but, um, it, you know, there definitely could be a South American Pro League. Uh, there's, there's absolutely at least 10 strong players in South America. And it'd be good for the game, it'd be good for South Americans, it'd be good for the Pro League, it'd be good for everybody in, like, every region of, uh, yeah, if, like, the people living in Europe could have maybe like, more slots and play with each other and people in North America, maybe even they could have more slots and play with each other. And if the South Americans can also just have their own, you know, top 10 players and have their own division and play with each other on low ping, it'd be good. Stream's gonna look laggy for one sec. Hey, Jurio. Prepare to fight. Uh, sorry, I know it looks bad. I just need to Round fix something. Or check something. Three, two, but yeah, one, we're gonna start on. Oops, fight. oops, oops. Uh, Cyrux. I wanna see how he plays. It's it's been like a week or something since I watched him play. And like I said, he he actually plays pretty good. And, uh, well, his railgun especially can be. Pretty strong, from what I remember. Uh, yeah, when you don't have the weapons to deal with the strong ability, that's that's what can happen. I feel like it was a little bit of a waste of the totem, but maybe Georgie won't find that totem, and it'll help him stack it up. Nah, he does find it. Honestly, it could have been a kill for Georgie in that moment, but thankfully Cyrix backs off and recovers. First blood. Nice. Cyrix getting the first kill. actually gets that kill, even without having full armor. It would've been nice to see Cyrux actually make sure his armor was full before fighting, because he, uh, he had some opportunity to get the, uh, the light armor, one of them. But he gets the kill anyways. That's a good lead. Nice rail, Georgie. Good LG and good rail by Cyrus. Really well done. that Cyrus survived that, but that totem, I think it healed him at the same time as it did damage to either Georgie or the uh, drone, but Georgie does get his first kill, and he's, I think he's done a pretty decent, oh Jesus, 
Wow, that totem actually killing Georgie. Pretty fortunate. Cyrux. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think Georgie's done a pretty good job with the, uh... With the drone, for the most part. He's done... A really good amount of damage from that thing. so weak in comparison yeah he does get railed but good for him for landing that rail into Cyrux he ends up making him not that healthy but might not matter too much look at these rails so risky of Georgie to even be here but it works out for him he actually gets to steal away the heavy Nice rail. I think Georgie's railable. He is. Yeah, Cyrux and his railgun is really opening him up for a lot of damage and just giving him a lot of space to win this map. from Georgie. He's gonna need to keep landing things like that. Five minute warning. And I wanna say denying the rail could be a good idea, but the only issue is that it's really hard to deny anything on this map because of how small it is. I mean you would think it's small so it'd be easier, but not necessarily. Because if you kill them they're gonna spawn I got the railgun half the time, so... Even if Georgie wants to deny a weapon, it's just a little difficult on this map, I would say. It's not like Corrupted Keep, where Corrupted Keep is small and you can deny... Lightning Gun. Or Machine Gun. Nice rail. drone again. Yeah, these drones helping him a lot, but they're both railable. Well, good for Georgie to land that rail. And he gets... Wow, what a nice rail. They're both landing really, really good rails. Ah. Oh. Well done by Cyrux. Well, he does land some damage with that rocket. And Cyrus had a good amount of health. No, no, he's gonna die. Yep. I mean, Cyrus did some decent damage, but... Or he had some decent health to survive, potentially, but... Georgie landed like a point-blank shotgun shots. On top of the self-damage by Cyrus. Cyrus is, uh... Rocket. Nice rail. And another one. He's really low. Georgie ties it up. Well done. He's landing some really great rails. It's really saving him and making it so he is creating a close game. Wow, some risky decisions from Cyrix. I don't think they were the best choices, but it worked. Nice. There you go. Finally gets gets to take care of that drone in a really good vertical rail. He knows Georgie's low. I like that he's doing this, prioritizing the health. 
He prioritizes his own health, and it still gets him an angle onto Georgie. And another. Almost landing another one. I would like to see him just leave and get the mega health. This is really bad of Georgie. And even Cyrux. Cyrux just should, should just go for the mega. There you go. Well, he should be able to get it now, but he needs to be careful. It would have been nice to see Cyrix be a little bit more patient. Mega is still up. Cyrix does end up getting it. This is looking good for Cyrix. Good rail, but... Yeah, good rail, but the only issue is that... He did it up close when Cyrix was not even railable. Good rocket. Yeah, it's GG. Well, first map goes to Cyrux. Well done to him. Yeah, honestly, that was, uh, it was a pretty good map from both of them. You win. Like, it was a good start by Cyrux, and then a good recovery from Georgie, and then Cyrux again just kind of started playing really strong and ended it pretty, pretty well for himself. So, well done to him. Next map, I can't remember. Uh, try to pull up. So yeah, next map is Exile, Cyrix on Ranger, and Georgie on Death Knight. I mean, I think if Georgie plays Death Knight oh, as good as he was playing it uh, in previous matches today, he's got a good chance to win this map. And his rail was looking really good. I mean, so was Cyrix's rail. But um, and then maybe, you know, technically Cyrix had a little bit better of a rail gun. But it, was, it, it looked pretty even. So. It's gonna be hard, though. I mean, uh, even if he does play Death Knight well. Uh, I think Ranger is better than Death Knight overall. I mean, people keep talking about how overpowered Death Knight is, and he is a lot stronger than he was before, because before he was pretty useless. But he's not really, like, OP, um, I don't think. Because there just are better champions. Like, I can name five champions, at least, that are better than Death Knight. I mean, it kind of depends on the map, of course, but for the most part... Death Knight is not the the best pick for a lot of maps. Round begins it just depends. Like I think it depends who what kind of champion you're playing against. Like I I've, I've picked Death Knight a lot in the Quake Pro League so far, but that's just because I. Uh... Wow, what a start from Cyrix to try to go for this aggressive push. Yeah, I've picked Death Knight quite a lot in the Quake Pro League so far, but it's only because I thought it was a good pick against like my opponent or just the map or something like that. Cyrix is really lacking weapons. He needs lightning gun, he needs rail, he needs even tri-bolts, he needs everything but he needs those core three weapons first. 
Oh man, he's not getting to heavy that fast. Oh man, he ran straight into the fire. Now we'll just stay in Cyrux. If he just would have gone to the right, I think he could have survived with like one HP before picking up the health bubble that was around the corner. But he did get to heavy late, and Georgie's flame strike was just good enough. Stopwatch. But again, that wasn't really a situation of. Oh, it should be a dead Cyrux. Oh, and he wasted orb too. Unfortunate. Oh, my bad. I didn't, didn't mean to keep switching right there, but anyways. This is looking good for Georgie. Mega's up kind of soon, or heavy. And he has Flame Strike. He can kill Cyrux. And Cyrux has no orb, like I said. Yeah. And now Cyrux is totally out of position for the Mega. He could have had one of the one of the major items. But he ends up getting none of them. Time. Yeah, I think he heard that armor get picked up. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna go for some damage. But Cyrus actually stealing away the heavy. Georgie was out of position. Chasing a little bit too hard for the kill. Hmm. Well, both of them missing some rails so far. There you go, they both hit. Oh, Cyrix hits again. Wow, Cyrix missing the killing rail by a pixel. But Cyrix is also railable. Georgie messing up the flame strike a little bit, I think, but still gets the kill. And he'll also probably get the Mega. I don't think Cyrix has time to come here at this point. <laughs> I don't think... I think Georgie thought the Mega was taking, taken already, but it wasn't. Mega's still up. He still doesn't realize. But he gets the Heavy. And Cyrix doesn't even grab Mega either. Mega's been up for like 50 seconds. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Mega's been up for like a whole minute now, at the very least. Oh no, GG. I mean, not literally GG, but... Unfortunate for Georgie. We'll just switch to Cyrux then. He's got weapon advantage. Jesus, like, he's out of position for the heavy. And he loses heavy. Man, they're both... They're both doing really bad at positioning in this map. Like, just... Losing out. Jesus. Yeah, they're both just losing out constantly on these major items. And they're both railable. It's so risky. Jesus. Oh, that rail would have killed Jordan. There you go. Heavy's up. Again, Cyrix misses heavy when he could have gotten it. I mean, he wouldn't have had that big of an overstack, but you're at least going to deny it from Jordan. Oh no, missing that rail is probably going to cost him his life, and it does, yeah. Well, even... I mean, the fact that they're both messing up positioning, and they're both messing up timing, it's still making this a close match. Wow, that should have not have been Cyrix's kill. Georgie knows it. is even risky of Cyrix. But he's doing good damage. Oh my god. He actually chipped enough with a shotgun to where... Yeah, he actually got that kill. He shouldn't go through portal though. Yes. This is a... This is a much better decision to just back off. Good rail. Honestly, the, the fact he landed those two rails is great. Because he still will get heavy. Oh, this is a really bad fight for Georgie to take. 
that sh that was honestly a really horrible decision <laughs> by Georgie. But it still works for him. Sometimes if you do the wrong thing in Quake, it'll still work for you. Like, you can make a, a huge mistake and still benefit from it. Um, it happens. And that was like a perfect example of Georgie having like two times or three times less health and going forward when he just shouldn't have. Cyrus. Okay, I don't know how Georgie got rang out. I think that's like a ping problem because I think on high ping connection, there's more pushback from rail and rockets and all weapons. Like, you'll get pushed back like double or triple more than you're supposed to. I think that was one of the cases of that. And that's whether you have high ping or you're, or you're going against high ping. It's, it's irrelevant. Like, and then honestly, that might make Cyrix win this whole thing. He's got a really good lead and there's not much time left. Oh, that rail would have killed. He can finish him now. Finish him with shotgun. Oh. Well, this is a waste of the orb, but... Maybe he was worried about the respawn at rocket or something? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Again, Georgie will die. Yeah, I think that might be GG. I don't know how Cyrix didn't get that heavy. He was on it much before Georgie, but Georgie actually steals the heavy, gets the kill, and gets a chance to come back. Ah, uh, but he messes up the flame strike a little bit. He gets 25 splash, but he still gets the kill. Although he's very weak. He honestly shouldn't even be here. You should see Georgie die soon. Unless he just plays passive well. Yeah, Cyrix has a really good lead. Five kills in two minutes is gonna be... Probably impossible for Georgie. Yeah, that's definitely GG. Well, congratulations to Cyrix, he takes it 2-0. Stopwatch. So he's number six seed going into the challenger playoffs, so. So yeah, well done to Cyrux. Yeah, congratulations to him. Definitely well deserved. Yeah, he just played a little bit better on both the maps. Just landing, um. One minute warning. Landing more damage, landing really good rails. I mean, even though the second map they were both doing pretty bad with positioning and timing, Cyrix just. I think it was just mainly he was landing more damage overall, and that's. That's what uh, helped him. But still, I mean, congrats to Georgie as well. He still got top two. He still will qualify for the playoff finals. Um, he'll have a lower seating. He'll have, one of, he'll have, I think, the third lowest seating in the tournaments. Yeah, I think he's 14th seed. So, yeah, like, it's number 14th seed, I think, for him, and number 6th seed for Cyrux. At least I think. I want to say it should be 12th seed, but... Well, because, I mean, there's 16 players, there's only two more of these, so you can be 16th seed in the last tournament, and then 15th seed next week. So, yeah. No, yeah, I think that's correct. I think, yeah, Cyrix would be number 6th seed, and Georgie's 14th seed. <laughs> 